The search is on for a new leader in Malaysia. Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin has bowed to pressure to resign, ending 17 months in power. Intense political horse trading is now underway. Live to Melissa Go in a moment, but first, a look at how things unfolded today. Months of political turmoil have led to this. Entering the palace for the last time as Malaysia's leader, Muhyiddin Yassin has resigned in front of the king, saying he simply does not have enough support in parliament. He caved in after the opposition rejected his last-ditch appeal. Mr Muhyiddin is now the shortest-serving prime minister in the country's history. In a national address, he said he's failed to save his government from those who are hungry for power. Saya tidak akan sekali-kali bersekongkol dengan kumpulan kleptokrat. Saya sekali-kali tidak akan mengganggu kebebasan badan kehakiman, apalagi membelakangi perlembagaan persekutuan semata-mata untuk terus kekal berkuasa. The leader's hand has weakened after months of infighting within his Perikatan Nasional Coalition. I harap dapat digantikan dengan orang baru. Saya tak suka dah orang-orang lama ni. Asyik, asyik apa? Asyik mengejar jawatan PM je. Ha? Ha, jadi kita gantikan generasi baru yang umur 50 ke bawah ni. We need new brains, new ideas, new energetic people to come in. And I think the youngsters should do a good job. Who told a young, PM, a young person cannot be a PM? Mr. Muhyiddin will stay on as caretaker prime minister until a new leader is appointed. Melissa Go joins us live now for more on this. Mel, no clear success from sight, but leaders of political parties are already holding meetings to decide who's going to take over. Indeed, lots of high-level, behind-the-scene negotiations going on right now. The dust has barely settled since the uh, resignation of Prime Minister Muhyiddin uh, was announced along with his entire cabinet. Now, leaders from uh, his own Bersatu party uh, and his former ally, or once ally, Amno and the opposition Pakatan Harapan uh, coalition, including the smaller parties, are all very tight-lipped. It's a numbers game, ultimately. There are 220 MPs currently, and many are trying to get into the new government um, when Malaysia goes into the next election, because if not this year, next year, when the time comes, because of the powers and the advantage of being an incumbent going into election. Now, the king has so far hasn't set a date to see political party leaders. It's barely hours since the resignation of Mr. Muhyiddin. Uh, by convention, the king... Uh, may ask for a short list of names from the parties for him to consider under the federal constitution. It's up uh, to the majesty uh, to decide who he thinks is likely to command confidence of majority in the house. Now, an inside source is telling me that things are changing by the minute. There are 220 MPs, I was saying, the magical number is at least 110. Lots of horse trading, uh, so-called frog jumping going on. Now, until the country has some form of anti-hopping laws in place, this is likely to go on, to continue, even after a change of government, analysts say, especially if the majority is razor thin. Now, the front runner, so far I'm hearing from Amno, it's party elders, the Grazali, who's a former finance minister, things are looking up for him because of the severe infighting now between the party uh, President uh, Zahid Hamidi and the former deputy uh, Prime Minister Ismail Sabri. While Anwar is said to be locked in intense negotiation as well with East Malaysian parties. Now he has urged all sides to remain calm. He welcomed the resignation of Mahidin. It has paved the way, he said, for change in the country. Now Dr. Mahathir, meanwhile, is keeping mum, not showing his cards till the very end. He has wanted a National Recovery Council that cuts across party lines, comprising experts, he said, who can bring the country out of the pandemic and, and nurse the economy back to health, and that's a priority. But it's something that's never been done, save in an emergency, and Malaysia has just existed the emergency, and the king didn't want another emergency declared. So everything is up in the air till the dust has settled, and even then, I'm not sure how soon can the king decide this round. It took him a week to decide on the eighth prime minister last year. Let's hope it's sooner than later. Mel, shifting grounds politically, but with the, with the pandemic still raging, Mel, you know, time is of the essence to get a new government up and running. I agree. I mean, it's rather unsettling uh, right now. All the cabinet ministers have 
resign on block. The government has fallen. Many of the officers are still packing as we speak, not sure of the directions. I was just speaking with the vaccines minister, Hairi Jamaluddin's officers a while ago. They don't know where he's, he is now, the coordinating minister for the whole national immunization program. Now, Hairi yesterday posted his farewell speech on social media, thanking everyone for the hard work. And that won him lots of praises on the internet. He's one of the very few ministers, he said, to have done well. Some are rooting for him to be the ninth prime minister. Even now, the nation is crying out for a young leader to take over. He's overseeing one of the most important portfolio, the National Immunization Program. Half of the population have received two shots so far. The plan is to vaccinate everyone by October. But he said that he won't be there to oversee it. He will leave it to the team. Now, every decision will have to refer to the caretaker prime minister. There's no cabinet. Mr. Muhyiddin joked about it just now to local media. It's a one-man show now, he said, um, until the king appoints a new prime minister. Only then a new government can be put in place. Now, right now, the pace, uh, the race basically again has started again. The race to Putrajaya has just started all over again for the country. Mel, thank you very much for that update. Melissa, go there in Kuala Lumpur.